Hey everybody, it's Jason with The Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Broken and Beautiful, a game about Kintsugi. Broken and Beautiful is a game published by Left Justified Studios, designed by Patrick Rowland. Plays, I think, two to four players. Two to four players, 15 minutes. Pretty accurate, it's lightning quick. And effectively what this game is about, it's about the art of Kintsugi. If you don't know what that is, it's when um, some kind of um, pottery breaks or something breaks and you repair it using gold. So the cracks are made of gold and it makes it more valuable than ever. That's what Kintsugi is. That's what this game is. You are collecting pottery, it may break, and you're trying to repair it with gold to make it worth more points. This is a simple card drafting set collection game that's, you know, over pretty lightning quick. My version has some awesome components, which we'll come back to later, but let's just go onto the table. Check it out. All right, so here's a game of Broken and Beautiful. There's a subtitle. Um, a game about Kintsugi, all set up for two players. Setup couldn't be easier. You take the deck, you shuffle it, you flip two times the number of players plus one, and give somebody the first player marker. That's it. Each player will also get one of these, which tells you the breakdown of all the cards in the deck. Now, the game is pretty easy. On your turn, you're going to draft a card, and you're either going to keep it in front of you as a dish for, like, points, or you're going to sell it for the gold icon at the bottom. That means it's out of the game. And the first player is going to pick a card. Second player picks two. Last player picks one. Then there'll be two left, and we'll talk about what happens next. So this player is actually going to take this one. They're going to take this. Next player gets to pick two, and they're going to take both of these, actually. And then back to me, I'm going to take a saucer. Let's take a saucer. All right. Now, what's left are these two. There's a cup and a saucer. Anybody that has a cup has to break one of their cups. Anybody that has a saucer has to break one of their saucers, and that's me. When it's sideways, it's broken, and it's no longer worth points until it's repaired, and we'll get into that. Then, this card goes away, and we bring out five new cards. And first player marker goes this way. Then it's their turn. So they get to pick a card. They have two dishes. They don't need any more. So they're actually going to take this dish. They're going to discard it, and they'll take two gold, because that was a two gold card then it's me i get two i want a cup and i'm going to take this bowl because i get two cards and i want to discard it for gold because i want to be able to repair my saucer all right and then back to that player they're going to go ahead and take the bowl so they'll take the bowl let's slide this over a little bit make sure we have room it starts to get a little big we can go up, I guess. All right, now, at the end of this round, a cup is going to break. And this is on top, but this is a serving tray. This will never break. So we don't have to worry about that. So if you have a cup, it'll break. I do have a cup. My cup breaks. Now, what happens after this, this goes away, is everybody is allowed to repair as many goods as they want using gold. The first one costs the cost on the card. The second one will cost cost plus one. Third one cost plus two. All that kind of thing. And right now I'm just going to complete this. So I'll spend one gold. This gets fixed and it gets flipped to its Kintsugi side. Fixed with gold. And now it can no longer be broken. All right. So done. All right. Then we'll flip five more. Whoops. Not actually flip. Just kidding. That's cool. Uh, three, four, five. All right, so it's my turn again. I still have something to fix, but I think I actually want this. I'm gonna take this. We'll go ahead and put it on a pie a little bit. This player gets two. They want another bowl. I'll just stack the bowls together. Uh, and they're also going to take a cup. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and take this. This is just for two points. I'm just gonna take two points. Now at the end of this round, a vase, a teapot or a tea jar is going to break and a saucer is going to break. So this player will break a saucer and I just have to break my tea jar and I will do that. So I have a broken tea jar and a broken cup. All right, now we can repair. This player will spend two gold. They'll repair their saucer. Done. And then I'm gonna spend one gold and I'm gonna repair my cup to go with this saucer here because that'll be real nice. That's still not fixed. All right, so I have a cup and saucer. That's good. And then this goes away and we'll flip five more. And that's how the game's gonna keep going until the deck runs out. And then we're gonna score. We're gonna score all the different types of items. So let's talk through some of them here. So say this isn't broken or I fixed it. Um, this one, the T jar, scores six points for whoever has the most. So right now I'm the only one with one. I would get six points for that plus an additional one because I fixed this. The saucer and the cups go together. They give you points for the cups. Fix is three, regular is one, and this is Unfix is two, repair is three, so this will give me nine points. One cup plus one saucer, both fixed, nine points. This is just two, it never breaks, so you can put it on either side you want, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, two points, and this one's gonna give you points for each item of this symbol. So I have one, two, three, so three points, and if it's repaired, it'll be two times, so I would get six points. That's pretty cool. Plates, you need two of them to get six. If they're repaired, you get an extra two. The bowls here are gonna give you points based on how many bowls you have. It's gonna be bowls times himself. So in this case, four points. There's also a gold card when you take that during the game, it just gives you three gold. What else didn't I show you? There's vases. They're pretty um, simple scoring. There's three vases in the deck. One of them's worth five, two of them's worth, one of them's worth one, two's worth five, three's worth 15. Uh, what else is in here? The, where's the storage thing? And the storage box is the last thing. This never breaks, but you can store up to four gold in it at the end of the game, and it will give you one point per gold. And that's it. And that is how you play Broken and Beautiful. Let's go up the top, see what we think about it. All right, well, that was Broken and Beautiful. So let's talk about the components that I have. Now, I have the deluxe version. I don't know what the difference is, but I have this awesome first player marker, which shows non-broken teapot. Kintsugi teapot, that's fantastic. And these awesome gold metal bits, you can't see how heavy they are, but when, when they're in the like in your hand, you got a bunch of them in your hand, they feel great, they clank around, they look so good. I don't know what else is, is deluxe, I think it's just that. I love the box, the way it looks. Uh, the card quality is pretty good. Um, I have no issues with it. It's not like linen finish or anything, but they're nice. Non-broken, or the regular side. Kintsugi side, easy to tell. There's gold lines in the art and the background's white. Um, my only issue with the iconography and the cards is bowls and cups. Let's find a cup of the exact same kind. Yeah, so here's a bowl. Here's a cup. They look really similar. Yes, you can tell. Different scoring at the bottom. One point at the bottom. Cups is straight points. This one's number of bowls. You can tell, but when you're looking at these quickly and you're assigning them with a saucer or something, this may get confused. We played a couple games. The bowl got assigned to a saucer. That's not good. Saucer's one cup. So that's my only issue with the components. Otherwise, no complaints. So this game is super simple. We backed it on Kickstarter. We got the deluxe version because it's like five bucks more and these bits are sweet. Um, but it's super light. It's just a nice little filler game. Uh, it's something you can bust out in between games when you're waiting on people just to have some fun. Maybe you're eating dinner and want to play a quick game or something. You can bust, bust this out, play it in 15 minutes. You can have discussions, have some fun while you're playing it. You don't have to think about it too much. Taking some cards, collecting sets, that's it. It, it. It's good. It's not my favorite game in the world. It's not setting me on fire. Setting me on fire. I mean, it's not setting my world on fire. Um, I'm not ever going to turn it down if someone wants to play it. I'm probably not going to request to play it a lot just because it's super light and it's over so fast. I feel like I'm just getting into it and then it's over. Um, sometimes in certain games, there could be some instances where cards aren't breaking as much. 
So you got you may have a pile of gold and nothing to spend it on. Um, but again, it's random with the deck. It's not every game. We played two games. One of them was like that. One of them is not. Um, so yeah, it's it's good. It's gorgeous. It's got cool metal bars. Um, and I'll play it gladly. It's probably not one I'm going to be busting out every game night to, you know, get my Kintsugi fix. But yeah, if it looks cool to you, go find it and check it out. That's basically what every game should be. If it looks fun to you, have at it, play it, have a great time, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So that is Broken and Beautiful, a game about Kintsugi from Left Justified Studios. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and as always, keep gaming. Mm-hmm.